Good evening, everybody. Good evening, brothers and sisters. This is Commander Alion, host of Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show. It's near 11 p.m. It's time for our Friday edition of Encounters. Welcome, everybody, to the show. All the new people, all the regular folks. I see you all, wherever you are around the planet Earth. Welcome. Good to have you with us. Jan R., good to have you with us. Christine Smith, thank you for the share. Please share and like. We want to get to 100,000 likes tonight. Uh, we're at two likes. I can't believe it. Well, I think TikTok's running a little bit slow. No way. There's only three likes. Uh, so you have to tap the screen. When you tap the screen, it brings up the likes. Loretta, Mike Masters, everybody here. Uh, Charles Flood, Lupita, everybody. Brian, Empress, show, uh, good to see you all. Everybody out there, wherever you are. Uh, Sal, 3649. Last night was really crazy. It was, re it was really good. Uh, there's some weird stuff going on. You know, we ended up looking at our screen, and at one point in the half first half hour of the show, we went up to like uh, 1,000 people watching the show, and it was like watching a wave come in. And then about a half hour later, I mean, it went down to like 400, and then it went back up to 700, and I don't know if TikTok was having problems or whether what was going on, but uh, it was just a it was a positive weird thing last night. Yeah, it went up to like a thousand. I kid you not. And then it went down. And then a while later in the show, I looked at the numbers going up by itself to about seven hundred uh, you know viewers. Uh, Gr, good to see you, Camp Sparkles. Hey, brother. Everybody in here. So who knows? I don't know how that happens or. But, you know, those little waves, when they happen, they're pretty kind of weird, you know, in a good way. You're watching the Friday night. I'm sure everyone's happy. The, the you know, the week is over. Slay, good to see you. Grand evening to you. Happy Friday. M. Neil, happy Friday to you. Lolo Agogo, that's a good name. Thank you for the share. TJ32986, just different waves. That's right. Elvira, good evening. Good to have everybody here with us. Cindy VW, good to see you. We're going to have a great show. Nyla's World, welcome. Rhonda, welcome. Just everybody out there, because I, I can go on all night welcoming everybody in the world, but I know you're all out there. We love you all, and we welcome you all there. Iris, Iris Annette, hello to all. Hey, Iris. Wesley Young, 97. Will. Everybody out there, man. Welcome. Uh, TJ32986 says they have a story. Uh, yeah, you have 774 followers. You're able to go live. Uh, so the one of the things we do, just for people that are interested in being guests on the show tonight, and there's always a number of people that want to come on here. Uh, number one, you have to be over 18. Hey, Amina, good to see you. Uh, you have to be over 18. Uh, no kids on the show. No vaping, no smoking, no drugs, no drunks. Uh, no paranormal discussion, no politics, no religion. No And no trolls. And no cursing. I think that covers it, everything. Um, hey, definitely. And, and everyone be respectful of each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Breakfast Club, good to see you. The good thing is, because I'm a professional broadcaster on radio for 21 years, I brought my concept of that radio show to this. And I've been running this talk show since 2023. I think that's when I first came on here. It's really amazing, almost two years. It's hard to believe. Marilyn, uh, good to see you. Good evening. Hey, D. Welcome to the show. Everybody coming in here. Hey, Mark Allen Povich. Good to see you, Allen. And let's see who else we got coming here. PZBO, Sharon Toodle, Greg, Tamara, Lucas Jackson. Yo. Hey, Lucas Jackson. RJ, Diane Stadler. Good to see you, Diane. Michael, welcome. James Nala, one love, absolutely, brother, one love, you know, absolutely to the heart. Here's a three two zero. Uh, Jan says, "Are your family members ever taken like you?" Well, no one's been taken in my family. Um, I, have, I haven't even been physically off planet yet, uh, not yet. I will be uh, with our group of five going at some point between now and next year, but not yet. 
physical, physical, going physically off planet, not yet. Hey, Chris, welcome to the show. But they all know, I mean, my family members know that uh, I've been very open about it months ago that I'll be going off planet sometime next year. Is your family also contactees? That's a great question. Um, I can tell you, my wife had, uh, has, I think, I think she's a contactee and my daughter might be, but I'm not sure, but she's definitely a star seed. She's got a lot of, she's into the crystals. She has a lot of crystals. She's amazing. Really, truly amazing. We, you know, we have a, another room in this other room. We have tons of crystals, including a big amethyst. And I'll be broadcasting from that room hopefully soon. Miss Miss was inactivated until she was 33. Hey, Sandy Allen, good to see you. Good evening. Your husband was a contact East Slave before you were. I am more connected than he is. <laughs> hey, that happens. Hey, Bernie, good to see you, brother. Good to see everybody coming in here. All the beautiful people around the world. And we had Northern Lights in Connecticut. Really strong Aurora Borealis in Connecticut, but um, you know we uh, didn't see anything. Although there are people in Connecticut in more less light polluted areas that had stuff they recorded, but it was a big solar energy storm going on. Kind of big. Ah, so uh, actually absolutely friendly here. That's being a talk show host. One of the things I know. Being on radio, you always want to be friendly with people, and I'm genuinely friendly anyway. Uh, in some of the places, some of the TikToks, they uh, people tend to be very snobbish, and it's all about them. And uh, I saw that when I came on to TikTok when I was like looking around. Uh, in terms of the Earth, let's just say I think the bigger question is I don't get into that subject. All the planets are round or oval; they're not flat. But I don't get into that discussion. But since you asked me, the commander will tell you as a star seed, all the planetary systems are circular. Hey, Linda, good to see you. Much love and light to you. Hey, Marinette, good to see you. Dan, Mark, welcome to the show. Everybody coming in here, welcome. If you're just tuning in. And uh, we know that the there's a lot of stuff going on. I've been checking to see. I'll let low power on this thing here. I have to charge up my iPad. But there's a lot of stuff happening. People are getting all worked up about the uh, hearings in Washington. Now, you know the commander is not getting worked up about the hearings in Washington. Why? Because, oh wow, this is pretty wild. The commander's not getting too uh, wrapped up about the hearings in Washington. I'm just going one of the things where I look at the videos and stuff. You know, but we do know that the House Oversight Committee released its list of witnesses uh, for November 13th, Okay. Hearing on UAPs, well, I call them UFOs, exposing the truth. Yes, they're going to expose the truth. The witnesses are former counterintelligence officer Lou Alzando, Rear Admiral Tim Gallat, U.S. Navy retired and former NASA official Michael Gold, and journalist Michael Schellenberger. And that's evidently some of the people. So, uh... The hearing starts at 11.30 a.m. on Wednesday, November the 13th in the Rayburn Building in Washington, D.C. So get the popcorn ready and get some apple cider and let's see if something really happens. Darla Johnson says, I was abducted. Miracle Magic says, I've been outside singing to them. They put on a show to me right back. So much love. Beautiful there, Miracle Magic. Let me see here. Hey, Cliff, good to see you. How does your removal of implants work? Um, the way it works, Janice, is if someone has an implant, and I, well, first of all, I will, if they've been an abductee, I'll hear their story first. I want to hear their story. 
and so people can hear the story. And then if they have had an implant, after hearing their story, I'll be sensing it. And then I end up uh, scanning them, and that's uh, that's what I do. I scan them, and I take the implant out. My father on the ship gave me the ability to do this a few months ago, and I've been uh, able to help a lot of people. I'm not only just using the energy for that. I've been given the ability to help. I had a woman uh, a few nights ago who was connecting to her star family, and a beautiful woman who was her mother appeared, a space woman, and... Um, She's now able to communicate with her. So these abilities I have work on two different levels, at least so far. I can do uh, removal of implants, and I'm also able to help people remember how to contact their, how to unblock themselves from being able not to contact their star family. Uh, you know, so I'm still learning. Jules, thank you for the, uh, for that, for the gift, for the lightning bolt. And we appreciate everybody here all over the world who are here now. Excuse me, on this Friday night. Is that truth? Welcome to the show. Is that truth? Edwin, welcome to our show. Laura, all the people coming in here, welcome. We're glad to have you all with us here today, tonight. F.U. Harley, welcome, Ted Brooks. Uh, Mr. Sheehan and Mr. Darman, welcome. Angel, welcome. Uh, good to have you with us here on Counters. For new people, this is like the number one place. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. Tomorrow night is Ashtar Command Night. On Saturday night, we, for those that don't know nothing, know nothing about the Ashtar Command or the history of the command, you'll learn a lot about the Ashtar Command on Saturday night at 11. I am also not only a contactee, I am from the Ashtar Command. So I am human. Like a star seed, if you know what your star seed means, I'm a star seed, but I'm also uh, having the human experience like everybody else and everything in that level. Just Jane Doe uh, is Ashtar Command part of the Galactic Federation. There really isn't a Galactic Federation, it really doesn't exist. The Ashtar Command oversees all the councils of light, and uh, there is all these other things that were made up on Facebook over the years are not really existing, but the Ashtar Command definitely exists it's the overseer of all the uh cosmic christed levels of light all the planetary systems of light and all the councils of light go through the astro command so um good question and you're going to learn a lot about that tomorrow night on saturday night for sure and i am also a contactee so i've had uh you know quite the many years of uh in seeing spaceships or people call ufos through the 60s and onward Hi, you're welcome, Just Jane Dell. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to our show. Amy Arden, say hi to Kinetic. Hey, Kinetic, good evening. Hey, Susan Mary, good to see you, Susan. Taylor Russell, I see all these people coming in. So welcome, everybody, to the show. And it's kind of weird. It's still early yet. It's only about 11, 11. Uh, our show at night, we usually can get anywhere from 200 to 400 people in here. It's always pretty... A pretty large audience. Hey, Susan, good to see you. Not by text. I can't. I can't tell by text. I need to bring the person up there, up, up on my live here. When the person comes up on my live, uh, then I can tell if. Oh, here we go. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, folks. Look at the numbers. Look at the top of the screen. Watch what's happening here. Unless I'm going crazy. Look at the top of the screen. It's going to go higher. It's going to go higher. It's going to go higher. Watch the screen. It's going to go up past 500. It's going to go past 500. It's going to vote. It's going to definitely go up. It can go up. It's, at six. it's going to go up. It's okay for it to go up. However that's happening, bring as many people in as possible. Now it's going down again. This is really weird. <laughs> It'll go back up again. It's really kind of funny. The other night, I'm telling you, last night, I went up to a 1,000 viewers last night. That was crazy. It'll happen. In the next two hours, something weird will happen. I guarantee you. Tommy Taylor, good to see you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Hey, Peggy, good to see you. 
and all these new people coming in, you're watching the best number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. Yeah, it went down to 101 seconds. Well, here it's not going to go down to 100, but it is down to about 261. I'm not sure what's going on, but it is pretty bizarre. <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll definitely go back up at some point tonight. I bet you something weird will happen. It'll go back up. It'll go probably over 300, then it'll go back up, and it'll, go, it'll be like a yo-yo. Maybe. Hey, Leah, good to see you, Leah Divine. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. And we're just so relaxed here, Mr. Spice of Life. Hey, Mr. Spice of Life, once again, good evening. Oh, yeah, you know weird stuff. On my show, weird stuff does happen. Hope, hope love, good to see you. You know, sometimes I'm thinking, like, wouldn't it be kind of cool if I had, had the power to um, just, like, use my consciousness to bring in people into the room without having to do anything? Like, use the consciousness to, like, say, okay, I want to bring 500 more people in the room right now. I want to bring 500 more people to watch the show right now. Could I do it? I don't know. I'm just kind of kidding. Uh, I don't I don't know that I can do that, but uh, that would be kind of funny if it happened. Ah, that's a good thing. Ripples of love is a good thing. <laughs> hey, Midnight, good to see you. Welcome to the show. BSK, everybody coming in here. You know what? That's a great idea. Everybody focus for just like maybe a minute. Let's all focus on bringing in 500 people without having to even do anything. Let's transmit our energy all over TikTok land through consciousness. And somebody who's open might receive your message. Come on over to Encounters. Wouldn't that be kind of cool if we were able to do that? Have I seen a UAP? I Actually, you know, Eric, I don't even call them UAPs. When I grew up as a kid, I, I call them flying saucers, spaceships. You know, then the government called them UFOs. Lavola, good to see you. Hey, Ozzy, good to see you. Everybody coming in here, welcome to another broadcast on a Friday night. Smile on, welcome. Hey, Pagan, good to see you, brother. Brittany Gillow. Did you want to say hello? Oh, you don't want to say hello to everybody in the audience? No. Nope. Okay, I was trying to get my daughter to say hello, but she didn't want to go on live, so. Amity, good to see you. Everybody here, Maria Sanchez, hello, here to listen and learn. I like that name a lot. Hey, that's a good name. Amity, thank you for the roses. We're going to get into some good stuff tonight. You know, the good thing is there's no rush. I don't feel like I'm in a rush here, you know. I'm like I having to rush across the street on a green light or something. We can all just chill out and relax and have a, hey, have fun. Good to see you. Hope you and Ray are doing well. And the Anunnaki, too. I'm going to say, say hello to the Anunnaki for me up there in the mountains. Ah, here we go again. We're almost at 600. Ah, we're going to be at 1,000. We'll look, look at the numbers on the top. 615. Maybe our meditation did that. 639. This is crazy. Look at this. Everybody look at the top screen. Focus, focus, focus. Ah, blessings, blessings, blessings. However, that's happening. Many blessings. Wouldn't it be funny if the Ashtar command was bringing people into the room? <laughs> we're going to go to 700. Are we going to go to 700 or at 664? Come on, we can do it. We can do it. We, we have, you know, we have confidence. <laughs> I'm loving it, man. All you people that all those 600 people in the room, don't go anywhere. Stay where you are. Don't go anywhere. If you're real people, stay here. This is Ashtar. This is actually Encounters, a UFO show. Do you really want? You're going down. Come on back. Come on back. <laughs> Hi from Area 51. <laughs> this is so strange. I'm telling you, and that that is weird stuff. You can't say that that's not weird. We went up to almost 700 people just now. Yeah, it's really crazy, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I wonder if the Ashtar community is, is having a little bit of fun. Hi from Andromeda. Hello, Andromeda. Good to see you. 
you know, I don't know what's happening. At this point, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> Money 9669. I've seen UFOs around my ranch. Uh, not yet. I'm going to bring up some guests here. I'm ready to do some guest interviews. There's so many interesting people on here tonight. Uh, we went from seven. Yeah, this is, this is going to be happening. I guarantee you in the next two hours, you're going to see that screen go up on the numbers. And at one point, it might go up to 1,000 and then go up to 700. Yeah, we're going to have another another big wave come in there in a little bit. Jesse James, good to see you. Jesse says, hello, I'm the one. Let's see here. I think I want to start with um, the someone. I'm going to start with the person that had, uh, let's see. Uh, Peggy on Area 51. Okay, time is speeding up lately too. Money is on the ranch. Money 9669. I think I'll bring them up first. Again, to be a guest on the show, you have to be over 18. No, uh, no kids on the show. No vaping on the show. No smoking. No drugs. No drinking. No, dr uh, no, uh, you know, paranormal stuff. No politics. No religion. Um, and uh, no foul language or cursing. And that's really basically the rules. So let me see here, and uh, we're going to see if this person, they, plus you got to be over 18. Let me see. Money9669 says they're on a ranch, according to what they're saying, and they've actually seen a lot of UFOs on the ranch. So we're going to take it. Also, the other thing I'm going to say, if I find anybody coming on here as a troll, I, as the host of the show, will knock you into space in two seconds. Anyway, let's see what's going on here. We might have a first guest. We're going to, you know, randomly select people based on what they're telling me. And if they're lying to me, they will be knocked out of here. All right. Let's see where we're going here. Welcome to Encounters, everybody. The number one spiritual UFO talk show. I'm Commander Elian, your host. Money9669. Welcome Hello? to the show. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening. Hey, how are you doing this evening? We're doing good. I'm glad to have you on the show. What's that noise in the background? It's it's my AC. It's the air conditioner. Oh, the air conditioner. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll shut it off. You, okay, if you shut it off, that'd be great. All right. All right. Hold on. Very okay, that should be better. Oh, much better. This is the way we can we actually can hear you instead of the air conditioner. Yeah. So welcome to the show. Where about you located? I found your comment interesting. I, I'm around. I'm around Lower San Antonio, like in between San Antonio and Laredo. Oh, okay. And I got. I mean, I have an idea. Yeah. So I live. Our ranch sits next to a river, and I'm thinking a lot of the UFOs that I see is because of the river. Because uh, fr I've flown over the ranch and the river, and it looks like a a big highway, like it's green like a big green snake and i think from the sky obviously uh these ufos see this also and they follow this uh this river you know and i've seen i've seen a lot of ufos uh this morning i was on my way to work and uh i literally looked to the left like it was between 5 30 and 6 and the sun was barely coming up and you could still see the stars so I looked to my left and I seen a big star, like it, it was a star and it was moving. And the first thing I thought was, ah, it's just a satellite, you know, going across the sky because I see a lot of satellites. And as soon as, as soon as I looked at it, it was just going, it was just going. And then it just stopped. Oh, yeah, really? it was, a, it, it was, a, it was a star, but it stopped. And then I'm thinking, okay, it's probably just a helicopter. It'll move in a minute. Sure enough, this thing hovered there from about 15 miles from my ranch all the way to town. So I, after the clouds started moving in and the sun started coming out, it just disappeared. I, I kept looking at it and it was just it was just astonishing to see it, you know, and it literally looked like from the ground up like a star, like it was just following me. Mm -hmm. And uh I did you, I mean, did you, I mean, you, sometimes these things happen. We don't think about it. Uh, did you get to videotape any of that or no? 
you know, I was driving on the highway to work, so I couldn't pull out my phone. I and that's the that's the second thought that I had. Videotape this because this was one of the clearest things that that I've I've seen, you know, lately. So I yeah. was like, I got to get this on camera, and I had my phone hooked up to my car. Listen, I was jamming out, and uh, no, you know, it was like just maybe like two two minutes where I got onto the highway and I couldn't do it because I was looking yeah. to the left. Yeah. And I just kept looking, and then I'm like, I don't, I can't do it. I mean, there's so much traffic on the highway, no, and I no, said I'm going to cause an accident. Yeah. So I, I didn't. Yeah. Isn't isn't that a bummer though? When you have something like that that clear, and most likely a big spaceship in the sky, and you wanted to document it, you'll have that chance again, I'm sure. You because you're in an area where there's a lot of UFO activity, so I guess you'll have to just be aware of that the next time that. Uh, you know, you never know when these things are going to happen. You could be on the highway. And you're right. You can't take a chance, and you're driving in high traffic, trying to take a picture of, or videotape a spaceship. Uh, you know, it's almost impossible. So you've had a lot of you have a lot of sightings down there. So tell us that that was that was amazing. The story you just told us. Tell us more about what's going on down where you are. Okay, so the first one I seen, and and this is the reason why I bought, like I I bought these binoculars that take pictures. Because when I started seeing these, I was like, I want to document this stuff. And so I bought a pair of binoculars that are, are they're camera capable. They're for yeah. bird, they're for bird watching. Oh. And uh, so the first one I seen, um, I was, I was out in the middle of the night and my girlfriend was inside and my stepson at the time, I was dating this girl that had a, had a kid. So I went outside to smoke a cigarette and I looked over to the right of the ranch and I seen these three lights. They were it, like a classic UFO. They were dancing in the sky and I was staring at it for like a couple of seconds. And the feeling that I got was that they were trying to show me, they were trying yeah. to show me something. They were, they were doing this on display. So they were, they were going in circles and then it was almost something like out of a movie. They were just dancing in the sky, blue, yeah red and green and then they wow. started doing this this little thing and i i rushed and i'm like hey lisa come outside check this out so yeah. her kid came outside real quick he seen it and by the time she got up and went outside it was gone like it just wow. disappeared well, that's so crazy. that was the first yeah that's the first ufo that i seen so that was the first one you've seen so um have you because you've seen so many of them have you recorded any of the ones that you've seen when you've had a chance to record anything like a date, the, the time, like documented well, it, or anything? It, yes. You know, actually, uh, I have a real bad thing with my phones. I break them like they they crack or or, or they'll drop and the, they'll break. And I know I do on some of the older phones. I've got about 20 phones that in a box that have just they're all cracked or broken. Oh, wow. That's and crazy. Uh, Yes, I know, right? That's just unbelievable. Like this one right now that I'm using, it's got a cracked screen on it, and it's still usable, so I haven't bought a new one. And uh, I'll tell you, last night, I heard something in, in my house. Like I heard something, and then I didn't get up because I was really tired, and I just turned around and went to bed. And in the morning, I seen that, that star that I guess it was – I know it was a UFO – yeah. So, um, you know, I do have pictures, uh, but they don't come in too clear. They they come yeah. in like just real blodgy or, or my, I have a, I have like a phone you buy at Walmart for yeah. like 50 bucks. I don't have like an iPhone or a real expensive phone. So mm -hmm. with really good clarity. So most, most of them that I've taken, uh, they, they just kind of look blodgy or just, just like. They don't they're not really in focus now yeah. i'll tell you another story if, if you want to hear it yeah so i i one like maybe five months ago i went to work in houston so my boss called me and said hey get ready we're gonna go to houston for a week and my neighbors oh I got, i've got actually two stories I re, i've got a really good one after this one so okay. so um i was in houston and my neighbor calls me he says hey are you there and I go, no, why? He goes, there's a big green light behind your trailer. 
like on on in the wooded area and i'm like what are you talking about he says i'm not there he goes well i'm kind of scared to go over there because it's giant it's like lighting up the back of your trailer oh my god so yeah and and he said it he said it was the size of the moon like wow he thought it was the moon he thought it was the moon coming up from the back of my trailer and uh, he took a picture of it but here's the funny thing when i got back i told him hey where's the picture at and he said man i cannot find it he says i've looked through my phone and i said here let me see your phone so i started going through his pictures and sure enough it was in there and and it was just as like uh i don't know it was a blurry light in the back of the trailer now two weeks before that now here's another story yeah two weeks before that uh i was i went outside and i literally walked outside on the porch i looked up and this thing hover was hovering over my trailer i mean oh i could i could throw a rock at it yeah mm -hmm. it was in the shape of a boomerang it, oh, it wow. was a giant boomerang yeah so no sound no nothing it took off as soon as i looked up i know it was sitting there because as soon as i looked up it just started flying away so this thing was huge so i i went to my neighbor and i started knocking on the door and he came out he's seen it and uh it was it, it took off because i live right next to the highway so the highway yeah. is always lit up with 18 wheelers and cars yeah. just literally going by like and, and right across the highway is a train so that leads me to another story but that's i'll tell you the one after this so we were watching this thing like go it was just going mm -hmm. and then he came outside and he, he started staring at it too he's like what the hell is that so here's the weird part so it's taking off it's so huge you could see it taking off this boomerang and i was like okay it's gone right no it wasn't gone it did like a 360 it went all the way around to the highway and turned around and came back to the ranch and wow. that was the freaked out part yeah so um this whole time that we were staring at it i never thought to get my phone i think i think he did but uh when it came back it circled right over us and i, I got under the tree i was i was scared dude i was like yeah. this thing is gonna come and take us so i got underneath the tree and he's like nah man i want to go with him and i'm like dude you're crazy dude so he stayed out there like not under the tree exactly. and this he, thing he was right out there with the spaceship yeah he, no he he wanted he he wanted the spaceship to see him and i was like yeah. hell no man i i'm i was scared i was scared out of my mind dude i couldn't believe that it took off and that it came back that's what that's what freaked me out because yeah. i thought oh this thing's gone and, well, and was, i'm, I'm you're, literally you're, telling you this is a true story no i know it's true your friend wasn't afraid though right no he wasn't afraid he smokes a lot of pot so I don't, I don't think he was just like, yeah, he's just yeah. freaking out or something. But no. I, I told him, I, I, here's here's another, here's the freaked out part. Now that movie Cowboys with Aliens, whenever yeah, yeah, yeah. that that thing, that, that, that spaceship, when it goes down and it picks the people up, yeah. it literally, when it came back around, it had some kind of box attached to the bottom of it, tethered to it. Like it was like a long rope and it had a light at the bottom of it and it was just it was following it i don't know if it was another smaller ufo or what it was but it looked like it was te it had it tethered to the so bottom a, of it so let me slow you down so there was a, uh there was a separate smaller craft and then the boomerang was the bigger craft correct yes yes it was when it when it when it first passed by it wasn't there and then when it came back around that's what that's what freaked me out that's why i got underneath the tree because i seen it dragging something it looked like it was dragging something like like it was tethered to a rope but it was a light it was a light right and it, it looked so like it was, it was but it wasn't really a rope i mean because it was a rope that would be uh kind of indicate that it was like if it was all i mean why would an extra track like it was it, was, it looked like a rope or was it something else tethered no to i didn't it, like, i didn't see a rope but it looked like it was connected to it somehow like it like was, there, there was a, like a connected yeah yeah i got you yeah like um, it was tethered it was tethered it, as this thing was flying by the, the light was at the bottom of it and it was just following it like it was mm -hmm. like it was being drugged now when the boomerang craft came back and you freaked out um 
Yeah, I mean, if you haven't freaked out, do you think that they were trying to make contact with you? I don't know who they are, but your your story is so interesting. I'm trying to have so many questions. So you're you you know, uh, did the the craft leave when you're hi- trying to hide away from the craft? You were freaking out. What did the craft just disappear after a few minutes, or what happened? No, no, no. It it did the same circle. It did the same pattern. It went it went around towards the the, the highway. And it, it it just flew off. It just I saw it. It just it just kept going. Mm. What freaked me out was that it came back around the first time. That's what freaked me out. That's yeah. why I, I went to hide underneath the tree. I was like, nah, hell no. I mean, seeing something like that and then seeing it come back, that's what freaked me out. Well, do you think this is one of the interesting things about your story? Is folks, he has this uh, non-terrestrial spaceship come around and come back to him where he is in texas near this highway do you you know and when i hear stories like this one of the things i have lots of questions is that there obviously there's an intelligence or intelligences that are on board that spaceship that boomerang ship that looks green did you feel like you were being contacted even though you were freaking out that they were trying to contact you or communicate uh, no. or something no, I, I don't. I, I didn't feel anything but scared because, like I said, when I walked outside, something told me look up, and I looked up, and this thing was, it, it just whoosh, it just took off, like it was, it was there the whole time, and and when I looked up, it just took off with no sound. I'm I'm literally no sound. It just yeah. whoosh, it just yeah. it just left. And then, and then I was like, oh, shit. So I went over to my neighbors, and I'm banging on the door. Hey, come check this out real quick. His wife came out. He came out. And his wife was, like, not even interested. She was she was like, oh, she, I don't know what she was doing. But she just yeah. didn't want to come outside. Yeah. She didn't and then uh, he came outside. He was looking at it. And he's like, oh, shit. Look at that. It's a fucking UFO, man. <laughs> I'm we like, yeah, dude. Watch, we, just, we just have to watch the language because of the TikTok. So uh, okay, yes. Also, so you didn't know that, so right. he's like, "Oh yeah," he goes, "That's a UFO," and I'm like, "Cause I've called him out a couple of times to see him, and sometimes they they go by and they're just gone." Uh, here's two more stories. So one night I was outside looking up. I'm always looking up at the stars because I started I started getting these these like I've seen UFOs. So I literally saw a car. It looked like a car, like the tail lights of a car. Yeah. flying on and next to the highway like it was just going it just mm-hmm. took off it had the back lights of a tail light now that it just kept going so that was a quick one so one night uh i walked outside i, I smoked cigarettes so i went outside to smoke a cigarette i don't smoke in the, in the trailer so i went outside and I, I literally lived next to the highway and yeah. and the road and the railroad tracks yeah. so uh, they're probably like two blocks from here. You can't feel it, but you can see it. So one night I'm looking over there and I see a green glowing light on like where the railroad runs. Yeah. So I'm I'm staring at this thing and I'm thinking, oh, it's a fire. It, it was bright and it was on the railroad tracks. So I'm staring at it. I'm staring at it. And it, it's, it just stays there and it's just pulsating, glowing. And, uh, the next day, I got on my motorcycle, and I said, I got to go see what this was. I got to go see if it was something burning or what. So I went on my motorcycle. I went uh, I went on the access road, and I went to the railroad tracks, literally got on my motorcycle, parked it, walked off over to the railroad tracks, and tried to find exactly where the spot was. And I couldn't, I couldn't see nothing burning. And uh, I told somebody else this story, and they were like, nah, they thought I was crazy. Yeah. So that's wow. that's another time that I've seen something. It was it was pulsating. Whatever it was, it was it was green, it was glowing, it was bright, yeah. and it was pulsating. Wow. And for people just tuning in, this is Encounters. Uh, this is a spiritual UFO talk show for all those people coming in here from all over the United States and all over the world. Welcome to the show, Encounters. My guest is Money nine six six nine in Texas, and he's telling us some really amazing UFO stories here tonight on the number one spiritual UFO talk show here on social media. So welcome everybody. So, you know, and this is really interesting. You're having a multitude of these sightings. So when did these sightings happen? How many years ago or were they recent? Can you like tell us a little bit, you know, when they happened? Okay. So when I was a kid, 
uh, we grew up in we grew up in a little small we grew up in town. My mom had a uh, we have a townhouse. So when me and my sister were, were, were real small, probably like eight or nine years old, we lived next to a water tower, uh, the city water tower. So one night we were looking out the window and we literally seen something flying around it. I mean, fast. That was the that was the first time that I ever seen one. Wow. It, it was me and my sister both saw it. It was just it was flying over the water tower, like circling it really fast. And and I was I'm I was born in 1980. So in those days, they didn't have a, a what do you call those uh, those uh, those they fly now and they take picture drones. Oh, oh drones, it, yeah, it, drones. Yeah, it wasn't a drone because we were we were small. So that's the first time I ever seen one when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was just something that I remember just right now. That was the first first time that I ever seen one, wow. and then. Uh, Okay, so let me bring you back to last night. Yeah, before last I night. went to bed, before I went to bed, I had this image in my mind of these. Uh, they're called the. Uh, they're they're the the tall blondes. Yeah, the tall blondes. The, the white with the white hair, right? Yeah. I literally had that image in my mind, but but this one had like eyes that were like on fire. They were they were like, they were kind of a blue, a green. And like, a, like, kind of like different. They were different yeah. eyes. Yeah. So, this morning when I went to go pump gas before, when I was getting closer to San Antonio, this yeah. guy walked in, and he had his hair like wet, and I, I literally looked into his eyes, and he had these bluish green eyes. I don't know. It just kind of like, it brought me back to think of of that right before I went to bed, the mm -hmm. the image that I had in my mind. He didn't have the long blonde hair or nothing, but he had the eyes, which really freaked me out. Okay, so um, you got freaked out. So did you sense that he was not from here, meaning that he wasn't an Earth-based bound person? Did, um, he different? did he look different to you? Did you sense? So this is really important. Like what you're saying is really important right now. You go into the gas station. You see this person walk in. You look at their eyes. They look different than normal people correct right yes okay so when you're looking at his eyes and they don't look like regular human eyes you're sensing something different which is what have you always got to go by your senses not by your brain so you're sensing something different about him how tall is this person he was tall he was i'm five five six so he was at least like five nine he was okay. taller than me he okay. was taller he was probably he was taller than me, and he had like wet hair, like he had something inside, it, like on his hair. It it was like a dirty brown, uh, dirty blonde, and mm -hmm. he, he yeah he did look different now that I think about it. But his mm -hmm. eyes is what caught my my attention because he mm -hmm. didn't stare at me. I stared mm -hmm. at him because we were I was mm -hmm. waiting in line, so I looked back and I looked into his eyes and I could see they were like, they were they were different. They were like a bluish green, but more blue. And uh, it kind of freaked me out. I was like, oh, shoot. That, and it made me think about right before I went to bed, what I was picturing in my mind, those Palladians, right? Is that what they're, the Palladians? They're called Palladians, yes. And uh, some people here know are connected with them. So this is the thing that we've talked about on my show before, that people from other planets physically are living on our planet. And that includes the Palladians. Um, now, uh there are space people that can walk down the street. You'll notice them if you, and you actually notice this person with the eyes, and that was the dead giveaway, the eyes. And so, yeah, so, you know, who, however they got there, obviously, did he, did he act a certain way? This, what, you know, what was he acting like when you saw him? He stood there. He got whatever he was waiting for because I was waiting for tacos. So I was waiting for my tacos. They called his order and he got his tacos and then left. He was in and out like real quick. He came in out of nowhere. Yeah. He, he stood there and then he left real quick. And I, I, I thought I, I like I looked towards where he was going because when I saw his eyes, I was like, oh, shit, who's this guy? And he left and I was waiting for my order at the gas station. And now, where, now, where did you see him? Like when he left the, the, the place, the gas station, where did you notice him going to? Did you notice anything weird? No, 
No, no, I he just walked. He just walked out. I didn't follow him. Uh, yeah. He just walked and left. Yeah, he just left. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Man, you have an amazing, that's an amazing story. And all shows are being recorded. By the way, uh, my big channel on YouTube is Ash Tor Command Spaceship News. All our encounter shows tonight are, and all our shows from last year and this year are all on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you missed any of my shows, and um, and what is your first name? My name is Jacob. Jacob, so nice to meet you. You're amazing. And you seem to have a lot of activity in that area, a lot of uh, UFO activity. Yes, yes, I do. I, uh, I want to ask you have you said earlier that uh, something about a being like uh, something happened and I'm trying to go back earlier into your story. Did you have a visitation by a space being or something? Um, n no, I, I heard something. I heard something. I, I hear stuff and I even even if I stay up late, like yeah. I'll, I'll, the sh I don't know, dude, but like the shadows like of the light, some of them, they look they look like heads and I just close my eyes and I, I, ha I have this sleep, I guess, disorder where if I fall asleep, like I don't want to fall asleep, but mm -hmm. I, I, I get into this. Uh, I don't know how to say it. I can't wake up like I'll be in a sleep and I'll, I'll be shaking. And I'll, I yeah. it's like it's like I'm under something like I'm under something. And uh, when I was younger, it would happen to me. It doesn't happen to me as often. But uh, it's just scary. Like you're in a dream and you can't wake up. Like I'm trying to wake up literally from a dream and I'm shaking and I'm trying to wake up, but I can't. And yeah. I, I felt this all my life. Uh, I hate it. And I hate to think about it because uh, it's, it's like, I like, I'm, if you, you're trying to go to bed, right. And you're, you're close your eyes and you're, you're going to fall asleep but you don't want to fall asleep because you're scared to fall asleep. Right. And that's sometimes that's the way I feel, man. Yeah, like, and uh, some people are asking, uh, uh, Jacob, do you, do you think it's a, a sleep paralysis or something else? It, uh, scientifically, I guess that's what people call it. Uh, sleep yeah. paralysis. Yeah. But, uh, to me, it's just a, a way of my life. Mm. Uh, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, I literally was thinking uh, to actually hold a pin, like a, a, a needle or pin in my hand and sleep with it so that I could poke my leg so that yeah. I could wake up. That's yeah. how bad. That's how, that's how serious I am about it. Like, wow. uh, yeah, because everything that I, 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 I'm like fighting, I'm yelling in my sleep and I can't wake up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, it's, it's what scary. Am I are you uh, one of the uh, my friends up in the Appalachian Mountains? They're asking you: Are you on? Are you on Indian land, like reservation land? Um, I, I I live next to a river. Uh, no. Um, well, actually, yeah. The uh, this whole river is connected to the uh, Nueces River, which was. Uh, I used to work on. Uh, I used to work on this ranch. I, I do. I, I when I was growing up, I, I've worked a lot of ranches. So I literally stayed on these ranches where I worked at. So mm -hmm. one of the ranches that I worked at was the Briscoe Ranch, which is a real big ranch here in uh, South Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually have a prison called the Briscoe Prison, which was mm -hmm. the governor of Texas at one time. So on his ranch, he has uh, Indian burial mounds where they, they have these uh, giant mounds, which is only like 20 miles from here. So yeah. whole, this whole place was literally Indian Indian land at one time. Interesting. So, interesting. You know, right. Very interesting. So if there is a history there before the roads were built and everything that it was indigenous land all through that area. Very interesting. Yes, it but, is. Well, well, Jacob, I want to thank you, man, for coming up here. And you're always welcome to come back if you have any more activity. We want to definitely hear about it. Um, okay. You know, you're just an amazing guest uh, on here. I'm a contactee, so I believe your stories. I mean, I've seen hundreds of UFOs since the 1960s. I've had two big spaceship sightings in the 1980s here in Connecticut. 
Uh-huh. So um, you'll find if you watch this show regularly, I'm on at 11 o'clock evening. Uh, we, and we definitely interview people. We share information here about disclosure, all that stuff. Uh, so you're welcome to be here all the time and uh, join us. I, w- I want to leave you with this story uh, before, I, before I go. Um, yeah. I wasn't here at the time. My stepdad was living here on the ranch with, with my mom. And uh, mm-hmm. I was living in San Antonio at the time. And when I came down to visit, he had told me that he witnessed a UFO here, that it was a, a giant bright light. And wow. I kept asking him, what did it look like? And he, t- he kept telling me, I couldn't tell you what it looked like. I go, why not? He goes, because the light was so bright. Yeah. It was flying. It was, it was huge, whatever it was. But he said that looking at it burned his eyes. And here's the thing. He wasn't the only person to see it. Uh, the whole town, because I live in a little small town in between yeah. San Antonio and, and Laredo. I don't want to yeah. give you the exact name of the town because I don't want people to. But yeah, he yeah. told me that it was so bright that it burned his eyes, and he couldn't yeah. he couldn't see it. He just could not see it. Well, yeah. So, some of these some of these spaceships are really the the intensity of the energy of the craft. Or I've heard many many stories, very very amazing. So you know, I want to thank you, man, for coming on here. And you're always welcome back if you have any updates uh, and you want to tell us something major that's happening. And uh, hopefully, you don't break any more cell phones, and maybe you can record some of those things. Yes, sir. It was nice right, meeting you. Nice to meet you, Jacob. You've been a great guest. We're going to everyone uh, give a round of applause for Jacob uh, coming up here, our first guest tonight, and uh, we're going to bring him down. Jacob in Texas, thank you so much for coming on here. This is Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show. I'm the hostess with the Galactic Mostess Command. That's a new one, Commander Allian. So, welcome to the show. And if you have a story to share, uh, regarding your sightings, uh, the stuff you're recording, if you had visitations by space people, I definitely want to hear your stories come out of the closet, talk about it. This is a, a safe show to do that. Uh, you can share your stories here. It's very safe to do that. Uh, and, okay, Andrew Morrison241 says, I've got a video of one, and, oh, that's interesting. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's my space helmet. <laughs> Thank you for that gift. Who gave me that? <laughs> Tara, thank you for the turkey. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, but if you definitely have a story to tell, uh, you know, we'll definitely hear it. I will definitely be happy to uh, hear your story. And I think there is somebody in queue. There was somebody waiting in queue here. They're not, they didn't wait long enough. So, uh, again, uh, to be a guest, you have to be over 18. No kids on the show, no smoking on the show, no vaping, no drugs, no drinking, no drunks, no paranormal discussion, no religion, no politics, and no cursing. Crystal Dream says, I haven't seen any visitors for two weeks now. And, and yeah, no nuking you, that, that's a good, good thing too. Uh, she knows all about it. Uh, she's very aware of the Ashtar command. She knows it exists. Andrews Morrison says, the one of my videos goes from gold color to blue. A stargazer, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to hear some more stories. Uh, you know, again, we... We get a lot of people that I know there's a lot of people in here that have stories related to their own contacts. We've had people that have been abducted. I know earlier some people came in here saying I have an abduction story. Uh, you know, so we have that. And so who here has had, uh, you know, unfortunately had been abducted by ETs? If you've had that experience and you want to tell the story, please let me know. And we have all kinds of people in here. So people interested in crop circles, mer people, the fairies, uh, uh, the angelic beings, uh, all that stuff related to the subject. Let's see. And just that had one shiny gold color light on my daughter and I. Interesting. Leanna Kelly, welcome to our show.
and we're just uh, you know actually i need to get more apple cider i'm going to come right back i have to fill up my glass with apple cider i'm running low on apple cider so i gotta go back to the refrigerator the commander will be right back i ran out of apple cider i have to pour some more apple cider in here man my only addiction to this show on this show beyond the addiction to the show is apple cider i'm totally addicted to apple cider i shall be right back keep looking at the screen if you see anything happen like a space person come on and say hello to you let me know please let me know you never know what's going to happen here i'll be right back we'll let the ashtar command run the show for now Okay, we are back, and we have a whole nother glass of apple cider right here. Got to have the apple cider. So, Andrew, we're going to bring Andrew up. Where is Andrew? Andrew's going to be our next guest. Uh, let's see, Andrew, where are you? We're going to go backwards. We'll find Andrew here. Okay, I think. Uh, yeah, here it is Andrew. Okay. Andrew, we're bringing you up. Andrew's our second guest, Andrew Morrison, 241. We're going to welcome Andrew to the number one UFO spiritual talk show. Andrew, good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Glad to have you with us. And, where, and you, where about you located? Southern Arizona. Oh, great. We have a lot of people in Arizona we've interviewed over, over the last two years. So tell us about your experience when it started uh, with our audience so they can have a little bit of background. All right. Well, I've had quite a few between March in August of this year, and that's about when I got the video. Um, the first instance was just the light that started. My my oldest daughter actually caught it. It was in the far east, and it looked like just a regular airplane light. And she noticed that it was moving a lot faster than normal. And so she there was like five of us there at the moment. It was my friend and my three kids and me. And when she said it, we all looked up. And within five seconds, it went from the far east to the mountain that was due north of us, right above the mountain, and it disappeared. Wow. And 
The second one was about a week later, and that came from the southwest of where I'm at. And it did a little bit of the same, but it was a little slower. And then as it got close, it disappeared. And then it reappeared about just a little distance from where it was. Mm -hmm. And then it stopped. And it stopped wow. there for a good minute, minute and a half. And then it just took off, just gone. Mm -hmm. Then the third instance was about a month after that. And me and my youngest were on the back porch because every night I go stand outside. I look at the stars. I like looking up. And I was outside with my daughter and all of a sudden it just lit up all around me about 10 feet out away from me oh, wow. all around. And I looked at my daughter because I thought she had a flashlight. So I looked at my daughter like, what are you doing? She was looking straight up. So I just looked up and right as I did, I saw the light pan away from me. Went across the field, we have 45 acres, and it went across the field that was in front of us and yeah. went up. You could see the beam of light as it was going all the way up. Oh, wow. And there was a craft right above us. And it was close enough that it was, it, it was maybe about airplane height. And mm -hmm. then from that point, it just disappeared, went black, completely black, and was gone. Wow. I don't know if it went anywhere. I didn't see it move. It just went completely black. It just went black. It did totally dis maybe disappeared or cloaked. Yeah. I mean, it could have it cloaked and you wouldn't even see it. It would be still there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the video one was the last instance. And that, me and my daughter and my youngest went back out on the porch. I think that was about two weeks after that. We went back out onto the porch. And we're looking around. My daughter said something to me about a, a light in the distance. But there's, I, there's a military base on the other side of the mountain from us. Okay. So I'm pretty cautious about the lights. And I make sure that they're not airplanes. I make sure they're not yeah. just, you know, helicopters, craft, you know, normal aircraft. Oh, yeah, the conventional aircraft. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I looked over at it and it was... Just it, it, it looked like a bright star in the distance, and I looked. I, I watched it for a good minute, made sure there was no blinking. After a few seconds, I kind of just let it go because I'm like, okay, it's not moving fast enough. It just looked like right. a bright light, so I let it go. Yeah. And then my daughter started getting all excited next to me and yelling at me, "Dad, look, look, look!" And then I looked, and it was like right above the mountain that was just literally my property bumps up against it. So it was right above yeah. the mountain and it was way further than that. Mm -hmm. So I started to record it and as it's coming out and in the recording, I cuss. So I can't, I could send it to you, but I can't post it. No, no, take no, no, no. Yeah. But um, I got a little excited, started cussing a little bit, but I started to record it and I had my daughter run inside and get my stepdad and my mother. Yeah. At their house, because we have like five houses on the property. Okay. So she got them, and they came out, and they were watching it with me. And it just moved real slow, just straight above us, and just kept going. And it was that same goldish color. And as it got closer, you could see a black circle at the bottom, dead center in the middle of oh, the wow. light. And That's it was a black really And then <clears throat> as it moved closer and closer, it got like if you look straight up, and you go about 45 degrees to your left or like, yeah, yeah to your left. Yeah. That's about where it was when it changed oh, wow. color. It just went directly to blue. It didn't disappear. Nothing just went from that goldish color to blue. blue. And then as it got directly above us, it disappeared. And when it disappeared, I waited a couple seconds. I turned my camera off. And right as I turned my camera off, it made like a U shape in the blue light out in front yeah. of it. Yeah. And it continued like a, like a crescent shape right blue light and it was just like a real thin strip and then it moved out a little bit and disappeared yeah that sounds like the, that would have been a beautiful picture of the u-shape before it disappeared that sounds phenomenal yeah i know i was kicking myself in the butt for not getting it yeah but there's always you know as i always say there's always other times when now when those experiences happen when you don't get to record it or catch it you're now going to be you know i always tell people on my show make sure your phones are charged up make sure if you see something on a road, you need to find a pullover place 
record it. Uh, because yeah. I've seen people in automobiles, they're recording UFOs. There's good stuff going on outside their window, but they're moving, so you can't really see it where you where you're it's a still frame where they can just like videotape it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's really absolutely. So that's what made... on TikTok are videotaping UFOs now, not fake stuff. I have people coming to me on TikTok with real footage, just like you would have footage. People are starting to pay attention now. You know? Yeah. After after the third instance, I was like, I've got to keep my phone. I got to record. Yeah. Yeah, and there, it. after watching it for a minute, I would like it registered. Like, get your phone. So I pulled yeah. my phone out, started recording it. Yeah, you know, and that's good. So you probably have a lot more recordings. You know, this is you know, you think what you got now. Uh, we talk about disclosure on this show, and uh, there's going to be an amping up of a lot of spaceship signs. I call them spaceships because they yeah. are spaceships. You're gonna you're in a prime location. You're gonna people all over the world are gonna see things. You in Arizona, in the area you're in, uh, you know, keep your eyes to the skies. You're going to see some more stuff in going into 2025, and that goes for everybody, wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet. Keep your phones, uh, you know, charged up. Make sure you've got good cameras, and be prepared to document, document, document what's going on out there. There's so much Absolutely. going on. And, for all, and uh, now our numbers are going up again, over 600. For all the 584, all the people, the hundreds of you that are coming in here somehow, Stay on here. Now we're over 600 people watching the show. It's going up again. For all the 600 plus people, stay here. This is the place you want to be. This is Encounters. This is a UFO talk show. I'll say it again to all the 600 people. Don't go anywhere. This is a UFO talk show. You're going to enjoy real talk with real people that we're interviewing about what's going on with disclosure and all these other things. So now, isn't that weird? Three times tonight this has happened. Now it's going to go. It's going to go slowly down. But if these are real people that are in here right now, the 500 of them, stick around, watch the show. It's either very strange or something weird's happening. Here it goes again. But anyway, welcome to the show, all the new people. If you stay here, the numbers are going up and down. I feel like we're in a wave. <laughs> it's a TikTok algorithm. Okay, it's acting up. I hope the algorithm is bringing people into the show. <laughs> and and I just want to say one thing. I I am I have somebody that's close to me that knows how to post videos without sound. They're going to yeah. help me figure out how to post that video without sound so it will be on my page here in the next day or two. Oh good. We'll definitely have to take a look at it. You know, I'm actually following you Andrew. Let me see here. I'm like, yeah, I'm following you. Yep. I'm now following you my friend. And so now friends, which is a good thing. And uh, if you ever have anything happening, and you will, I'm sure you're the kind of person that will look for this stuff. You'll record it. Uh, you know, when you get a recording, let me know. You're welcome to come on here and talk about it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I see, if I sit out here long enough, I'll see them. Like you if will. I sit out here for an hour, two hours, I'll see something. Yeah. All right, Andrew. I want to thank you, man, for being on here on Encounters. Uh, are you new to the show? Or have you watched this before? Or Watched you before, yeah. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you finally came up. There you go. All right, brother. I appreciate you, and uh, thanks for coming up and sharing the stories that you shared tonight. No worries. Have a good night, boss. You too. You too. Let's just do this here. And uh, this is Encounters. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, it's a great night to be. Hey, Kit Kat. Midnight had a story. Where's Midnight? Midnight has a story. Midnight. Okay. We're going to bring Midnight up here because Midnight has a story, I've been told. Midnight, come on up. We know who Midnight is. Midnight, come on up. Okay, we're going to have Midnight on our show tonight. Our third interview of the night with Midnight, and it's past midnight. It's just a little bit past midnight. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> okay, this is um Sandy. And, yes, um, Sandy. But, but last night I saw a um, spaceship. Um, up, up in the sky, and um, it had had something like like around. It's round. It then had like a stick on top of it. It had a big white bar around it. It was it was lighted it was lighted up. Yeah, it was lighted up real real uh, bright, and um. And then I noticed the um, spaceship beam a light down 
to to the ground, and I was standing on my porch, and I saw the light moving down the down the street, moving down, mm -hmm. down. And I was just looking at it, and I was thinking, well, um, I was just looking at it, and I was thinking, I was like, I I don't think it was a was, was um, coming to get me anyway, because right? it was just going real slow, slow, mm -hmm. and, and um, I was I was not afraid of it. Or not. Oh, good. How close but, was this? How close was the spaceship to where you were, Sandy? How close was it? It it was um about um about four houses away from my house. Four houses away. So it was yeah. this? She's saying there was a spaceship four houses away from her house. And yeah. how low was the spaceship? Was it really low, or was it really high in the sky? Or can you tell it, us? It was you know, very, it was very high in the sky. And, and then I then I recorded another um, um, space spaceship like like it was very very um, tiny, and I seen. Um, a um, bunch of um, little tiny balls going around like crazy, going hmm. back and forth. And I think that was a spaceship too. Okay, so was the spaceship the big one? There was a big spaceship, and then you had these little balls, like um, like orb ships. These little ships. Um, the like was well, there, was there more than one? Is what I'm trying to ask you. Well, but I I just only seen one as far as i know this one okay and then um but but the big spaceship was way way up real high and and it had um it, it was round and then it had like a stick going on top of it and it was like a big ball a, a light a light bulb a big yeah. light bulb on top wow and and, and how uh, and, uh, how long did you see the ships for? Like 10 minutes, 15, 20? Oh, I would say about, um, about 15 minutes. These 15 little minutes. tiny ones. These yeah, these little, little tiny, tiny ones. Was going around back and forth and, 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 every, and everything that I saw. But what, then I um, heard a, like a big noise. Like a yeah. little um, spaceship noise, like a, hmm. like a yeah. uh, humming noise. A humming noise, okay, okay. So she heard a humming noise during the event when she was watching these spaceships for 15 minutes. Sounds like you had a lot of spaceships, you know, for yeah. 15 minutes, a lot of activity going on. Do you always yeah. have, do you, do you always see these things, or is this unusual for you? No, this, this is my first time I walked out of the house for, first time. for, for a long time. I walked out of the house. I mean, during the night, and I just decided to look in the sky, and yeah. I saw that, and I was shocked. Wow! So, so, so now that you had that experience, um, you know, you say in a long time, have you had experiences years before this with UFOs or no? Yeah, I had. I had in um, nineteen seventy. It was in the nineteen seventies. I saw a um red white and blue and maybe had had green on it um and um it was near lake michigan it was like it was in washington park we had washington park and me and my husband was in the car and we, the car and we saw the um spaceship coming towards us and i told my husband I said I was looking looking around and see if if if, if anybody else was um around, but nobody nobody was nobody was around at all. So anyway, I um told my husband, "Let's get the heck out of here because I, yeah. I think was coming after us." I had told him, coming after, yeah. <laughs> just, just, yeah, you go real fast and then towards the end. By by the um, by close to the zoo, kind of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the right house, I told him to stop, and we stop because we, we we didn't go too far, but mm -hmm. we we just 
try to look again, and there was nobody behind uh, behind us. And so, have you had uh, Sandy? Have you ever ever had any visitations by extraterrestrial beings in your life? No. Okay. No. Nope. I was just curious. And um, I was just I I was just wondering, do I have any um 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 stuff in, stuff in my stuff in my body? Uh, well, let me ask you a question. What do you? How do you feel? What she's asking um, me is if she has any implants in her body. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't tell if I have any in me or not. But I, I, I just wondering, should I get it checked or not? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I'd have to scan you. I don't think you do have any implants. You seem like you're okay. Do you feel okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel okay. I don't think you have any implants. You know, if I if I felt you had any implants, I'd tell you. I don't think you have any implants. Okay. You're good. Okay. And uh, yep, I I I was I'm shocked last night. It happened around seven o'clock p.m. last night. You yeah, what happened last night? Um, it happened. It happened around seven p.m. last night. The sighting happened. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, Sandy, I want to thank you for coming up here and sharing your, your uh, UFO encounter story. But, yeah, don't worry about implants. I don't think you have any implants. If I did, I'd tell you. Okay. And another thing, I saw, um, I got um, some videos on your app, and um, it's from videos from, from the other apps. And oh, I yeah. just thought... So I can look at them. I mean, um, I I don't know if they're fake or not, so I don't know. I, I just yeah, I'll, I'll know if I look at them. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll know in two seconds if the recording is sent is if it's a fake UFO or not. I'll know in two seconds. Okay. All right, Sandy. Midnight. We want to thank you for coming up here, sharing your story from last night. That's really amazing. Uh, everyone, give a good round of applause for Sandy. Midnight, and we're going to bring her down, and uh, we want to thank her. Uh, for sharing her story, and uh, you're all great. We're having a great show tonight, as always. You're the ones who make this show possible, and this show is brought to you by the people. No, uh, th no, we don't have any commercial ads here, so I can't say this show is brought to you by the Pentagon and the, and the uh, anti-disclosure company of the world. No, we don't do that. This show is brought to you, Encounters is brought to you, with sponsorship by the Pentagon. We want to thank the generals for sponsoring our show. Like that's going to happen. You know it's not going to happen. And uh, let's see, Adrian, Adrian Alvarez. We're going to take a chance. You have to be over 18, folks. No cursing on the show, no swearing on the show, no drugs, no drugs, no drunks, no alcohol, no whatever, no, uh, no paranormal discussion, no politics, no religion. Again, no cursing on the show, and let's keep it clean and respectful, everybody. And uh, you have to go over 18. Adrian, That's welcome right. to the show. Hey, how's it going? We're doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good here, yeah. I do have a story, but I don't know if it's... It, it, it might not... Be, it would have to be not... It has to be like UFO, ET related. Uh, yeah. You know, it could be crop circles. If it's unrelated, you know, then I don't want to get into it really yeah. too much. Yeah, I get you know it. I mean? Okay, I'll. Uh, it's fine. But uh, thank you, though. No, I appreciate it, man. I'm, I appreciate your listenership and viewership. So thank I'll you. Keep watching and, it. Yeah. All right. Very good. And uh, that was Adrian. You got an Ashley's got an auto tapper. Good, Ashley. So you don't have to worry about your fingers coming off because you're going to be auto tapping. <laughs> very, very good. Texas MMI. Thanks for joining us, Texas MMI. Raul. All the people coming in here. This is Encounters. There's now 600 and almost 700 people in here right now. For new people, I have to say this. You're watching Encounters. Do not go anywhere. Do not change the channel. Do not even change anything. You're watching the number one spiritual UFO talk show on planet Earth, Encounters. You see now we're up to 700 people here 
All 700 of you stay here. Do not go anywhere. There's nowhere else you need to go. You need to stay here. This is the encounter show, the show about ETs, UFOs, contact, disclosure. This is where it's at. I have to I have to do this publicity now because we have over 600 people. Now it's going to 587. This is amazing. <laughs> stay with us. Stay, stay, stay. Don't where are you going? <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Uh, okay, we're having a little bit of fun here. I don't know if the algorithm is acting up on TikTok. We're having a little bit of fun here. I really, I'm telling you, this is the craziest thing. This has been happening for two nights on my show. Now, if it's only happening on my show, then we know there's something going on. So the way to know if it's only happening on my show is someone sneaking onto another platform of some other live and nothing happens on their live, wherever they are, we know that something's really happening here. Yes. You know I'm amped up on a Friday. I'm so amped up right now, you can't believe it. <laughs> Watch out when the commander's amped up. It could be trouble, galactically speaking. <laughs> yes, Harmama, we're happening. Half pint, thank you. Namaste, Mahan Suk. Mahan Suk is also a star seed, a good friend of mine. He's holding the grid down there. He's doing a good job, and he is a space person as well. He already knows that. We've helped him out recently, getting rid of some things that were blocking him from doing his mission work, and now he's able to do his mission work, Mahansuk, most definitely. He also is the gong person on the planet Earth. He does the gongs. You'll have to check him out. When he does the gongs, you'll get the vibrational frequencies of light with Mahansuk. I love that name, Mahansuk. You know, I look, you know, I don't. Whenever he, I see, I hear that name, I always say Mahansuk. <laughs> Commander Mahansuk, the spaceman down there. He is a spaceman for sure. Space brother. Absolutely. You know, we love everybody. Yes, it's your. It's, yeah, that's right. And now it's your space name too, Commander Mahansuk. He knows it. When you hit, when he hits those gongs, it's going to make your vibrational frequency go up so high that you're not going to be able to come back down again. So I've heard the gongs, and he's got these huge gongs. They're amazing. Greetings, Smokey. Be gong water. Gongs unlimited. <laughs> That's very true. You know, and the thing is, I guess I'm really happy about, you know, I'm always happy, but I'm really happy that we're ending this year and we're getting ready for 2025. I am so happy for next year. I am so outrageously enjoyed with bliss because we are going to have more sightings than you can count. And that's not even like, not even the beginning of contact. That's just the visualization of our space family starting to show up in different places to give people a little bit of a, a teaser, a little teaser for the people on Earth about the spaceships. A little bit of a teaser, maybe. You know, like I'm, if I was an idol, I'd say, a little bit of coffee, maybe. You know, and you know, you may see a leprechaun, or you might see a spaceship. A little bit of a sighting, you know. If I get any more amped up, folks, watch out. <laughs> we are enjoying our night here with everybody. Hey, Kit Kat. Have the, you know, if you see a leprechaun in Long Island coming off of a spaceship, let me know, will you? <laughs> with a three-leaf clover that's glowing and floating in the air. Here we go. I am a bit of a comedian, too. You know, the commander can can get comical once in a while. Uh, just Jane Doe. Sometimes, just Jane Doe, I have a question. I get the feeling, as you're asking me these questions, I have a feeling you have an implant. Uh, is that correct? Are you? Uh, do you have an ET implant in you? I think you do. Thank you, Michelle. And Mahansuk says, I'm Irish Scottish from Dog Star. 
Uh, the UFOs don't contact you, Ninth uh, Child. The space people in the spaceships. Well, the UFOs being the spaceships, so so the way it works is there are intelligent beings on these ships. So the UFO is a vehicle in which they will travel to your area if they if they so choose to. If you have a connection with that space group that's inside that spaceship or you call UFO, they will con they can contact you telepathy, yes. Through telepathy they can contact you. And Jennifer says, I'm so excited for 2025, 2026. 20, 20, Jennifer, I'm with you 100%. Ah, thank you, Brian. We appreciate it. Glowing and floating, you rock, Commander. Thank you very much. I couldn't glow and float without you, Brian, and with all the other beautiful people here. You know, Jane Doe, I'm going to bring you up on my show here. And I think we're going to try to help you. If you come up here, we can uh, scan you. What I do for you, know, I want to just share something really important. So one of the things I do is that my father on the spaceship, as a matter of fact, I want all almost 400 of you to know this, that on this show, my father, the Ashtar Command, are watching the show from the spaceship. They're watching the show from the spaceship. Now, the numbers are going back up again. Wouldn't it be funny, and again, this is where my... My, this is where I'm going out on a hypothetical. Wouldn't it be funny if uh, the numbers are going up and this, uh, uh, my, my Ashtar Command family is upping the numbers on my show right now? Now, I'm not saying that's happening. But let's say, just for a sake, that they were playing with the numbers on the TikTok here on the screen. Could be happening. Why not? Now it's going back down again. But anyway, just kind of kidding. I don't know. Uh, but just Jane Doe, seriously speaking, I'd like to bring you up here and see if you have any implants. And what I do, folks, is I will remotely, with the palm of my hands, my face just disappeared. With the palm of my hands, I will take out the implant. Seriously speaking. No, it's true, I will. Yes, we're sending love and light to the Astro Command on the ships. Moosey89, welcome to the show. Folks, I'll tell you right now, if you're watching TikTok, this is where you need to be. If you're watching right now, this is where you need to be. That's right, on a Friday night. And then Saturday night, you really need to be here. Saturday night is Ashtar Command night at 11 o'clock. All things Ashtar Command, folks. No, you're not going to find that anywhere else right here. Saturday night is Ashtar Command night on social media. You want to find out about contact, about what's happening? This is where it's at. Saturday night. Dexter762 says, I think I have an implant. Dexter needs to get a lot of followers, and then we can, you know, potentially help them out when they get, uh, you know, up there. If you have, you know, and I'm going to try to be some, somewhat serious because I'm so amped up here right now. If you have had, if you are someone who had an implant, really, really, truly, seriously, and it's not a joke. If you've had an implant by a negative ETs um, and you have over 50 followers, I can bring you up here live. Now, if you have over 500 followers, I can bring up you live and I can visually have you on the screen. One of the things, um, again, is important to know if you're being a guest on the show, whether you've been a contactee in the positive sense or what have you, um, <laughs> I think so, Hansuk. Um, I have a, I have an implant in my finger. Okay, um, so I'm going to help some people out tonight. So you need to go into the multi guest option. You need to be a, uh, over 18 to come on the show. Definitely over 18. No trolls on the show. No cursing. No vaping on the show. No smoking. No drugs. No drunks. No drinking of any sort. No uh, paranormal discussion. No politics and no religion and no, no and no flat earthers people coming in here flat earthing this and flat earthing that no flat earth discussions there's tons of other places for that so yeah all right let's see here what we got going why do they implant people well the ets that do the implanting paula the paula and they've done it for over 70 years in conjunction with our government secret government they were allowed to take people and implant them and abduct them in terms of 
of uh, getting the technology from these spaceships that they have, which our government did reverse engineer their spaceships. So that's why they actually uh, were allowed to, for many years, implant people in all generations for the last 70 years on our planet. Halfline, thank you so much. Hey, not just Nicole, good to see you. We are amped up tonight. Uh, Dexter says, can you be abducted non-physically? Um, very good question. Maybe. But the abduction would be physical, yeah. No, it'd have to be physical. You might think it's not physical. They might make you think it's not physical, but it is physical. Uh, so if you take now, if I take the implant out of somebody, will the ETs be mad? No, they won't be mad. They won't. They can't do anything about it. Uh, when when people have implant, I've taken so many implants out on my rate on my show here. People, I've documented it on my shows on my YouTube channel. I've taken out e implants that the ETs have put in. I've taken implants out that our government has put in with the ETs in human beings. I've taken them out and destroyed them. I destroyed the implants. And frankly. If their ETs are mad at me, the low of vibe ETs are mad at me, they won't come near me because I can kick their butt. The one thing I can tell you tonight, I am so amped up, I can kick the Zeta and the reptilians' butts right out of this universe. They do not even touch me. They don't come near me. My vibrational frequencies are so high, I can just, they wouldn't be able to withstand the light that I'm lighting up. <laughs> they won't be able to, they couldn't even stand my, my light right now. I mean, I am so lit up right now. I am beaming with light right now. I am so amped up. It is absolutely insane. Man, I am lit up. I'm not even drunk. I don't drink. Uh, Par Parlay Pros LLC. So I'm going to bring some people up here. And let me see. I'm going to bring up zero, 00, the person, that person first, and then Parlay will be next. I might be doing a few remote implant removals tonight on my show here. I'm seriously speaking. Hello, how you doing, uh, Zero Zero? Can you tell us your first name? My name is Isaiah. Isaiah, nice to meet you, brother. And where are you located? In Los Angeles, California. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of people that watch us in L.A. and in California in general. So you were talking a little bit about you might be having some implants. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little story about how that possibly happened? Yes, um... So when I was seven years old, my grandmother had a magnetic dart board and one of the darts stuck to my finger. And I inquired about it with uh, family members and put a flashlight um, under my finger to see it. And my family didn't know where it came from. And I've had it since I was around seven years old. I'm 25 now. And I've been to Specifically, within the last three months, I've been to around four different hospitals inquiring about it seriously for the first time. And um, they were surprised that it wasn't like like a, uh, like if it was a foreign material, was, what they said was if it was a foreign object, my body should have pushed it out by now. And they were surprised mm -hmm. that it didn't hurt and all of these things. And... Um, yeah, they had no answers for how it could have gone there. And I don't remember being abducted. I've had, I've seen UAPs and I've had pretty extraordinary dreams, but I have no recollection of being abducted ever. And it's magnetic, right. but it doesn't go off. It doesn't sound off sensors. Like I've been, I've taken airplanes and, you know, like metal wands, metal detectors. It won't sound those sensors off, but it's magnetic as, as it wow. shows in the video on my page. Wow. So let me ask you a question. You uh, And I can tell you this because I'm not from this planet. I actually work with the Ashtar Command. I'm from off-planet. I'm a starseed, so I came here from Mars, a planet of 10 to 15 million inhabitants. So I'm human, but I'm consciously not always human. I'm like if I switch consciousness depending on what I'm doing. So you wouldn't know that you were abducted if you were abducted. Many of the abductees never knew they were abducted. They find themselves back in where they are in a nanosecond. They have no recollection of being uh, abducted. I'm going to have to take this person out of here. I'm not sure who she is, but that's uncalled for. Bye-bye, whoever that Andrea person is. She's gone. Um, you know, so many people would not know they're abducted sometimes because they're taken by very advanced intelligence that takes them, abducts them, and then brings them back to their home. Mm -hmm. So 
what I want to do is, um, if I can, if you give me permission, I'm going to scan you. And uh, where is this thing in your body? It's in my re It's in my ring finger on my right hand. Okay. So we're going to scan you in general. And what I'm going to do is I want you to close your eyes. And what I want you to do is uh, breathe in and breathe out uh, of your nostrils. Breathe in and breathe out of your nostrils a few times. What we're going to do, everybody, is I have the gift of being able to buy my father on the, on the ship. I've been given the gift to remove implants remotely. I can do this right from where I am. He's in California. I'm over here in New England and Connecticut. I will, re I will actually reach out to him. I don't even have to physically be in his room, but I will affect, I will be able to remotely uh, take out the implant, which I believe is an implant. Okay, let's try it. Okay, we're going to do this. He doesn't have enough followers to turn on the camera, so we're just going to go with this. We'll be able to do it no problem. I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath in, a deep breath out. What you're going to see, everybody, is eventually he will tell me when to stop when I do the motions, and I will stop. And when I get to that area, we'll work on the hand area where that finger is first, and then we'll scan the rest of the body to make sure there's no other implants physically in his body, and we'll remove them. Okay. All right, so let us uh, let us do this now. Give me a second. I'm going to switch my consciousness over to my cosmic consciousness, my astral command consciousness, and I'm working in the highest cosmic Christed light frequencies right now. What I'm going to do is slowly scan the top of your head. I can start feeling the energy, and in a minute or two, you're going to start feeling energy like uh, a heat energy around your head first. And we'll work our way through your hands. Okay, here we go. Tell me to start feeling the energy. I feel something. Yeah, that's me. I'm going to amp it up now. I just want to do a little bit of it. Now I'm going to amp it up. I'm going to go around your face. I'm going to go slow so you can start feeling the energy. Some of it might be tingling station. Some people feel it as a heat energy. So I'm now working around the face area. I'm going up and down on both hands here. I can feel the energy from your face here. And we're going to work on the hand area. I'm going to scan. I'm just doing a preliminary scan to make sure there's no implants in the rest of his body. And if there is my heat signature of energy hitting into your body, you'll tell me to stop when I hit something. If I there is anything there right now, I'm not feeling anything. Okay, I'm going to work on the hand area. Is it the right hand or the left hand area? My right hand. Okay, so we're going to do the right hand area now. I'm scanning it right now. When I get to the finger that is got that happening, tell me to stop. I'm pretty close to it. I can feel the energy. Mm -hmm. Tell me when to stop. You can stop. I right feel there. the heat. Okay. That's where it is. So what I'm going to do is neutralize that area, neutralize the object in that finger. We're going to take it out. I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to start pulling it out. I'm keeping one palm of my hand with the heat behind it on the finger. I'm going to pull it straight out. And as I'm pulling, you're going to feel a little bit of something. It won't hurt you at all, but I want you to feel that I'm actually shaking it a little bit so you know that I'm actually there pulling it. I'm going to pull it out. When I got it out of that finger, let me know. We're also going to heal the, the, the skin. As I pull it out, we're doing healing energy as well. 
sometimes these implants are bigger than they seem. I'm still pulling it out. I'm completely in control of the implant. What I'm doing, everybody, is taking this implant out. He's had for a number of years in that finger. And when it's out, let me know. We're almost there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually increase the heat energy on the back end of the implant to force it out. It'll kind of like pop out. So you might feel a little bit of a pinch. One more. Keep your eyes closed. Don't think. Focus, focus, focus. Tell me when I have it out. Almost. This whole thing is going to come out. I don't leave any bit of the implant in the person's finger or body. The beings, the uh, lower vibrational ETs put this into his finger a long time ago. Oh, thank you, Gazelle. Oh, oh, what happened? I just lost. Uh... Wow, that was weird. I'm going to destroy the implant. I don't know what happened to him. I was just about done with the implant. And I won't know now if I got all the implant out, but I am destroying a good portion of it. So now I don't know what happened to him. I'm not sure if he had a Wi-Fi problem. That was strange. I don't know if he's still there. Zero, zero, are you still there? He's gone. Declined 34 times. That's kind of weird. Now I'm concerned. Can you send someone to check on him? He might come back. Oh, just Jane Doe, you can't get on there? See, the one thing I don't do is assume anything or project something. I just know that right now he's not on. So all I can do is say, I lost him at the moment. Maybe he had something happen. I don't know what happened. But I know I had the implant almost completely out of his finger, the hand area. I didn't get to complete the process. I hope he comes back. We want to make sure he's okay. Yeah, he might have lost connection, I think. He might have gotten nervous. I don't know. Maybe he got nervous because I actually was doing it. His phone might have died, yeah. So before we go all over the conspiracy theories here, maybe his phone died. I'll go with that. I'm going to go with the phone died. I don't know about trackers. It could be his battery. Yeah, I don't want to assume anything here, you know. Uh, Parlay is my next guest. Parlay, uh, let's see. I think Parlay is another person that had has uh, been implanted, abduction and implant experiences too. Uh, Parlay, welcome to Encounters. How are you? We're doing good. And uh, what's your first name and where are you located? My name is uh, Jay and I'm in Alberta. Oh, Alberta, Canada. Welcome. I appreciate you coming on here. So tell us about, you know, you're on the number one spiritual UFO talk show, number one on social media. Tell us about yourself and uh, tell us your story and then we'll get into the whole implant part of it. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, so, um, when I was younger, for sure. Um, we, 
our friends in the neighborhood's mom definitely talked about UFOs because she's seen one come to her house and she wants to say her sister was abducted. And uh, I think it was honestly, did you say you're from Mars? Yes. Original, originally, I'm a star seed. You know what a star seed is? No. Okay. So there's a lot of people watching the show that are star seeds. A star seed is somebody that is that were human. I have I have a brother. I have you know aunts and uncles like you probably do. The difference okay. is, I have had many many UFO sightings since the 1960s. Also, I had a contact when I was a kid with space people on a spaceship in the cul-de-sac in my court when I lived in Long Island short but for a short period in New York State when I was a preteen, and uh, they were wearing light blue space outfits. And they were in a, a saucer with windows that were kind of tinted. And they had a lighting power energy system in the middle of the ship inside that was going like crazy. So I've had, I have a really strong background. I know a lot about all these things. And yep. so that's what a star seed is. If people on, you'll meet people on here. If they say they're a star seed or, you know, Palladian star seed, they're remembering that they don't just come from Earth. They're all human beings. We all are. We're, you know, we live regular lives, but we're not just merely here being just human beings you know what i mean yeah so like one time one time i hit my head after driving 12 hours after working 15 hours so it was like almost almost like a 27 hour trip and then i hit my head and fell down i lost consciousness but then i could see down the hall my kids and then i could feel the ufos talking to me telling me do you want to come with us here and it was almost like it was out of to outer space but then i looked down at my body and i thought but my family needs me, so I rushed back inside my body. But the UFOs were asking me about coming to the light, right? And it was almost energy. It felt like energy. So let me ask you a question. How old are you now? 33. 33, okay. And uh, so you were mentioning in your comments here that you had, had been implanted. Can you tell us how potentially that happened to you? Because I've dealt with so many people I've helped with implants that were abducted by lower vibrational ETs. So you're in Alberta. What year did that happen to you? Could have been when I hit my head in 21. All right. I'm taking that person out. I believe they're lying. I believe they're lying. You don't do that, man. You don't do that. You see? I was starting to wonder, good thing I knocked him out now, you know? Good thing I locked, I just knocked him out now. That person, out, wherever you are, in Alberta, Timbuktu, get a life, get mature, come on this show. You know, you need to get your act together. Kid, I say kid, I don't think you're 33. I think you're probably 17. So... No, 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 no. You didn't send, he, didn't stay, he didn't even stay on long enough to get on to do what he was going to do because he was going to go there and we knocked him out. Bye-bye. Parlay somewhere else. <laughs> See, I've been doing this a while. You can't fool the commander. You can't do that. He was lying. He was absolutely lying and he wasn't 33 years old. You know, absolutely not. You see, good thing I'm tuned in. I can tell. Like when he said he hit his head, and then, and then he, told, he said he saw his kids and the UFO, the whole thing was a made-up story. Made-up story. <laughs> yeah, I know, he's trying not to laugh. But we got him early. See, before he went off on a tangent, we got him off the uh, program really quick. Not happening. Now we can go hang out with the guy who wears the clown outfit with the with the uh, with the cow outfit with the disco lights. <laughs> there you go. But you are watching Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show. Uh, good crystal dreams. Yeah, he wasn't a good actor at all. Nope. I don't believe it. 
unfortunately, Parlay, I don't believe it. I am not going to let that happen. Sorry. Nope, not happening. Not genuine. Mm -mm. You were going somewhere, and it wasn't going to be on my show. And we have over 97, almost 100,000 viewers, uh, followers. Let's keep it going. Yeah, I think you're right. His heart chakra is clouded. You know, there is definitely more happening with the videos. Um, I'm down on low on my percentages here. Actually, I've been looking at videos earlier. Let me take a look here. And we might have something to show you. Yeah, I have a number of places where I go. And I think one of them is this one here. Let me see here. Is this one of them? Oh, I think I showed this one already. There's other other videos to show you tonight on the show, maybe. We're going to take a quick look here, and we'll see. So we're going to see if there's any other things we can show you here. Maybe I'll show you one video. I'm just scanning right now my map. And we're going to choose randomly here and see if there's any video footage on this thing. No video footage here. And we'll try this one here. Let's see what we've got video. Nope. I'm looking for some videos to show you folks. Give me a minute. I'm on top of the thing here. We're going to go up the coast. Let's see. What state shall we? Let's see what this one is here. We're going to go over to the Gulf Coast. I think we'll go to California. Mexico. Let's go right here. November. Oh, let's see if this one's got any video footage. No. Not all these postings have video footage, so we have to take another look here. Any video footage? Oh, this is interesting. No, no video. Uh, but we do have things happening here. I'm just looking at some stuff right now. Yeah, we do have some video here. Wait a minute. Oh, this is interesting. Wait a minute. I'm going to check this out a little bit. It says here. All right, this is interesting. This is not really long. It's like four seconds. This thing was in the sky. It was like a green light. The sky was in a truck. I think I'm going to show you this. Yeah, I might show you this. I got a video here I might show you. No, zero, zero never came back. But I'm going to show you this video. Give me a second. I'm going to turn the light out here. This is a very short video. And let me at least narrate it first before I do this. This was from Roseburg, Texas, September 23rd of this year. This is a four-second video. I'm going to show it to you right now. It's pretty weird. But very interesting. Let me do this here. Let 
Okay. Now what I want to do Okay, here it is, right here, wait a minute. Hold on, okay, here we go. Let me see if I can make this go here, wait a minute. Here's the light right here. I can't get it back to where I had it. And it's recording. Now it's not moving. Okay. I don't know what happened. Oh, uh, bummer. Here we go. Here it is, right here. What's this? Roseburg, Texas. This is crazy. They woke up and they recorded four seconds of this thing. This, this, like this orb or something. It was really crazy. This is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, have you ever seen like that? Yeah, I don't know what it was. It, the guy recorded it in Roseburg, Texas. You're not going to see this at the UFO hearings in Washington. Do you think the Pentagon's going to show videos like this in Washington? You think Congress is going to get these whistleblowers to show you these kind of videos? No, not never. But you will see them here on Encounters. This is for entertainment purposes only. Okay. I can keep, you know what? This is so hypnotizing. I can look at this particular object all night. You will be hypnotized as you watch this light of this extraterrestrial craft. You will be hypnotized. There's nothing wrong with your TV set, there's nothing wrong with your phone. This is for real. They are here, be here now, they are here, be here now, be here now, space is the place, be here now, okay, enough, enough. Enough, stop. Okay, that, okay, I need to stop it. I needed to stop that. All right. Now you know. That was actually, seriously, that was one of the more interesting, interesting things I've actually seen. And uh, let me flip the camera. Turn the light on here. That was one of the more interesting sightings. Yeah, it's kind of, it's addicting. I almost got addicted there watching that particular footage for four seconds. That could have been a problem. I could have been on here all night playing that video. That could have been a real problem. But I didn't get addicted. But it was interesting, seriously speaking. That's, there's so many things out there people are recording. There's so much out there. The public is recording amazing footage. And I doubt the Pentagon has anything that good in their vaults. If the Pentagon has a big spaceship on video, I doubt it. I think any one of you will probably get a videotape of a spaceship up close or a flying saucer before the Pentagon ever shows you anything because they don't have anything. 
I don't think they have anything. I will challenge anybody out here who has top security clearance who can tell me the truth that the Pentagon actually has something really good on video that they can show the public and show the public those things at the November 13th hearings in Washington. I doubt it. What do you think? Mr. and Mrs. Pentagon, what do you think about that? The commander is challenging the Pentagon to tell the truth. Yep, that's what we're doing. We're challenging the Pentagon to tell the truth. We know they will not tell the truth. They're not going to show it to us. Shogun, you're absolutely correct. Every one of you know that to be true. November 13th, Wednesday, coming to a news channel near you, or at least some news channels on cable, the second hearing, the second big hearing about whistleblowers and disclosure and telling the people the truth, let's see how much they tell, brothers and sisters. Wednesday, this next week, Wednesday on the 13th, is the hearing in Washington in Congress of the UFO committee that is going to ask questions and try to get answers of these so-called whistleblowers that are going to tell you the truth on national TV. They won't reveal anything. You're absolutely correct. You know it. I know it. We know it. Absolutely correct. It's almost 1 a.m. I've had a great time tonight. Uh, I think News Nation probably will. Uh, ser seriously speaking, News Nation probably uh, the um, the uh, channel for, I think it's um, C-SPAN. C-SPAN probably will cover it. Thank you, Linda. I am so amped up tonight. I am actually in rare form. You know, that's why I say when I'm in this, when I'm this amped up, when I'm this amped up, the trolls won't even touch me. They'll be out here in two seconds. They'll be afraid. The trolls will be afraid to come on encounters because we will blow them away. <laughs> we love you all, seriously speaking. We're really in for some really amazing times. And we are really coming into a new year that is really a new year. And I think we're going to have some really incredible things happening. Uh, thank you, Mario. And you're super duper as well. <laughs> okay, I wanted to you know, say thank you. I'm going to check out April's show. If April's still on, I don't know if she's still on. I'm going to check out April. If she is on, Friends with Fairies. Hey, Brenna, thank you for the hat. Uh, if she's on, we'll hang out there a little bit, and then we're going to go to sleep. Uh, so do check us out. Tomorrow night is Ashtar Command Night, and I hope I'm as amped up tomorrow night that as I am tonight. Thank you, Grizel, for the hat job. Uh, thank you, Starcy. We appreciate you. Jason Dean, thank you for the follow. Those hundreds of people that came in earlier, coming in every couple hours or whatever, Thank you so much to the worldwide audience here that for making this show the way it is. I want to thank the uh, the Academy in Hollywood for uh, the Golden Crown, and I want to thank uh, uh, all my uh, writers and people uh, in Hollywood for making my movie successful. It's been a great movie. Thank you, everyone, for going to the movies to see my movie that doesn't exist. We appreciate you very much. My new movie coming out next year in Hollywood is called Disclosure, The Ashtar Command Lands Our Ships written and composed by people in Hollywood that we don't even know yet. I'm just kidding. Anyway, have a good night. I am actually, I'm, I'm actually surprised. I'm very rare form tonight. And uh, yeah, I'm an extremely rare form. <laughs> I don't know. I hope, I hope I can behave myself with the rest of the population. When I go outside out of my home, I'm hoping I can be acting like a regular human being. That might be almost hard to do. This is going to be interesting. I might have to be very careful. <laughs> do you thank you for the roses? I am so. I mean, look. If I didn't have, if I had a choice, I'd be on here all night. Just kidding. I'd be in trouble if I did that. My family would probably not talk to me. Can't have that happen. <laughs> so okay, everybody. Time for me to go. I love you all. 
you all have a good, you know, make sure your phones are charged up. Uh, make sure you're looking at the skies at night instead of looking, you know, unless you're driving, make sure you're really seriously looking up, go to the beach, go to a mountain area, go to a rural state park, anywhere away from, you know, all the polluted light. And I want to see everybody start taping stuff. Um, if you see something really interesting, record it, you know. I'm not talking about like uh, satellites or anything like that. Record it. Because there is stuff going on. So, all right, everybody, thank you for the gifts. We'll catch you tomorrow night, Saturday night at 11 for Astro Command Q&A and everything related to contact and so forth because things are happening. Take care, everybody. All my shows are on my YouTube channel, Astro Command Spaceship News. So do check that out. We're making sure all our shows are on there. I might be one behind. I'm not sure, but... Uh, this show will be on YouTube in, another, in a, probably another couple hours. Take care, everybody.